I'm going to open your Bibles or keep them open to John 20. It was a, a difficult time for the disciples of Christ. It was a difficult time for the three ladies who had stood at the foot of the cross and watched Jesus be crucified. What made it most difficult was not only for these three ladies, but for all the disciples, for all the followers of Christ, none of them understood, even though Jesus had said it on multiple occasions, that yes, he was going to die, but yes, he was going to be resurrected. Now, these women didn't all come from the same direction. Mary Magdalene was actually the first one to get there. And when she saw that the stone was rolled away, she left in a state of panic and went to see Peter and John. And she followed Peter and John back to the tomb. When they, when they looked inside and they recognized it was empty, Mary looked inside. It's rather interesting because two angels are sitting in there. And she doesn't recognize who they are. All she recognizes is that the tomb is empty. In fact, they said to her, woman, woman, why are you weeping? And she said, because I've taken away my Lord. And says, I don't know where he is. Now, for Mary Magdalene, Jesus was not just the Savior of the world. He was her best friend. And really, isn't that the way it should be for us? That Jesus is not only the Savior of the world, but he's our very best friend. This woman lived a very difficult life. She experienced a lot of rejection in her life. But Jesus represented hope for her. He represented faithfulness and love that she had never known before. Jesus was the only one who treated her with respect and love. And instead of trying to take things from her, Jesus filled her life with joy, peace, and hope. Verse 1, John 20. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw the stone was already taken away. She loved Christ. And when Jesus was crucified and buried, Mary couldn't wait for the sun to go down for her to go and put the oils and the fragrances to prepare Jesus for a proper burial. And her heart was crushed. And she stayed by the tomb weeping and crying because she could not find the body of Christ. And even though those two angels stationed in there tried to reconcile her, tried to console her, verse 13, she said to them, because they've taken away my Lord, and I, I don't know where they've laid him. She was just totally oblivious to who she's talking to. You can imagine her pain. Her only friend, the one that truly loved her for who she was, had been singled out, crucified, and laid in a cold tomb. Now when Jesus appears to her, as recorded in John 14 and 15, she doesn't recognize who Jesus is. In fact, it said, woman, he says to her, woman, why are you crying? And then he says, who are you looking for? Jesus had great restraint because he knew who she was looking for. And the scripture says, thinking that he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, where... Have you put him that I may go get him a have him for a proper boy a burial? She had seen Jesus brutally crucified. And to her all she saw was an empty tomb. I came across a story about a young boy named Philip who was born with Down syndrome. And he attended a Sunday school class with eight-year-old boys. He was a little older. He was accepted by them. 
unconditionally, but he was accepted. And one day the teacher came up with an idea, and she brought in a bunch of empty hosiery eggs. Jen, if you don't know what that is, just ask your wives. And she said to them, go outside, find something that reminds you of God, and put it inside and bring it back. So all the kids went out, including Philip, and they all came back. And one by one, the teacher would open the egg, and whatever was inside, she would ask that student to explain how that expressed God to her. She came out of the last one, and she opened up, and it was empty. One student said, that was stupid. And finally, Philip raised his hand and said, that was mine. And so the student said, well, Philip, didn't you understand the exercise? You're supposed to put something in there. And he said, the tomb was empty. So my egg shell is empty. Because Jesus is arisen. Man, the students were overwhelmed. From that day forward, Philip was fully accepted by the class. Not long after that, he died from an infection. And on his casket, all these little, little third graders came up and they put empty hosiery eggshells on his casket. They got the message. In Mary's bewilderment, she endured countless questions as to why Jesus had to die, why Jesus had to suffer. She, she could, just couldn't imagine at that moment a resurrection. And Mary carried all of her heartache to the tomb that Sunday morning. She rushed there as soon as it was permissible. And she, when she arrived, her heartache got even worse. The stone is rolled away, and the tomb is empty. She wanted to hold him. She wanted to prepare him for a proper burial. It was so much, she, she was breaking under the weight of sorrow. Until, verse 15, when Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she again explains, because I don't know where his body is. He says, who are you looking for? And that's really a question that all of us need to come to terms with. Who are we looking for? Who are we looking to fill us with hope and joy and peace? Jesus knew who she was looking for. He just wanted to hear her say it. And again, she said in verse 15, Sir, just tell me where you've buried, tell me where you've placed his body. And Jesus could wait no longer. In verse 16, he said to her, he said that, Mary. And immediately she turned, immediately she knew who it was. And in Hebrew, she said, Rabboni, meaning teacher. Mary came to the tomb to prepare her Savior for a proper burial. And suddenly she was transformed from depression and sadness and sorrow to exuberant joy. And she rushes toward Jesus when he raises his hand and he stops her and he says in verse 17, Stop clinging to me for I have not yet ascended to the Father. As important as going to the Father was, Jesus waited just long enough to minister to Mary before he went to the Father. Before he went to his mother, he went to this poor young lady. And today the Lord is looking for people like you and me who are passionately in love with him and who are seeking him every day of their life. Jesus longs to walk with us just like he walked with Adam and Eve. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Isn't that a wonderful promise? If you seek me, I will find you. God doesn't need a GPS. He knows where we are. He knows what brings us joy and happiness and 
peace and tranquility. Who are you looking for today? Are you looking for the Lamb of God? Are you looking for the risen Savior? Are you looking for the kings of kings? This morning as we prepare for communion, we need to surrender our hearts to Jesus Christ so that we can hear him when he says that word, Mary, when he says, Dennis, and Karen, and God, and we know we're hearing the words of the Savior. So we're going to separate this time for the foot washing service. And directly back up that door is set up for couples or for families to do communion together. If you go out to the right, and to the right of this building, the first door, communion is set up, foot washing is set up for the men. And the third door on the right, foot washing is set up for the ladies. So straight back is for couples and families. First door to the right is for men. Third door is for ladies. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you so much for instituting this experience called communion that gives us the opportunity once to, to bond with one another, but more importantly to bond with you. It gives us an opportunity to reconcile with one another and to reconcile with you. It gives us an opportunity to rededicate ourselves to you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name.